the new requirements to get residency in Mexico in 2024 are going to blow your mind. I couldn't believe it when I saw these new numbers. So in this video, I'm going to tell you a little bit about why you might want to get residency, a quick overview of how the process is going to work. And also I'm going to tell you the new numbers in 2024, the new financial requirements. And finally, if you can't meet those financial requirements, I'm going to go over a list of various ways that you can get residency in other ways, because the financial requirements is just the most popular way to get residency, but it is by no means the only way. And you will almost certainly qualify for one of those other ways or to be able to get creative enough so that you do qualify. So the most popular way to get residency in Mexico is through financial solvency. And the process in order to do that is first, you're going to make an appointment at a consulate outside of Mexico. Usually this is going to be in your home country. Number two, you're going to go to that appointment with a stack of papers like bank statements and things showing financial proof, like showing that you do meet the requirements. And then at that appointment, you're either going to get approved or denied. And if you get approved, well, then they're going to put a sticker in your passport. And after you get that sticker in your passport, you have 180 days to enter Mexico. And by the way, everything I'm saying in this video is true to the best of my knowledge. I could get something wrong, so try to double check with other sources, but this is all correct to the best of my knowledge. But again, just do your own research. So you have 180 days to enter Mexico after getting approved. And then once you do enter Mexico using that sticker, well, then you have 30 days to continue the process in Mexico. So to do that, you're going to go to an INM office, that's immigration here. You're going to fill out their paperwork that needs to be filled out. And then you're going to get an appointment. And usually you'll get your residency card that same day, and you're going to be paying a few hundred dollars to the Mexican government. So that amount will vary depending on which residency you're getting and also how many people there are in your family. So there's two main types of residency. One is temporary and the other is permanent. First, let's talk about temporary. So when you get temporary residency through financial solvency, it's going to be valid for one year. And then when that year is coming to an end, you can renew it for three more years. So you can have temporary residency for a total of four years, after which you can convert that into permanent residency. And after you qualify through financial solvency the first time and you get your temporary residency card, you don't have to qualify again as long as you maintain your residency. Even converting it to permanent residency, you don't have to qualify again. So why would one want to get temporary residency? Like anyone with a US or a Canadian passport or most Western passports can enter Mexico and get 180 days visa free. You can stay in the country legally 180 days, and then generally you can leave the country, come back and get another 180 days. So there's actually a lot of people who choose to never get residency. Now they ran into trouble doing that in 2021, I think it was, because the Mexican government decided to crack down on that that year. But then they reversed those policies and now it's kind of back to how it was before. But anyway, having temporary residency is going to allow you to do more things in Mexico. It's going to allow you to get a tax ID number. It's going to allow you to open a bank account at most banks. It's going to allow you to apply for some credit cards, not all credit cards. It's going to allow you to register a car in Mexico. It'll allow you uh, to rent more easily because, for example, like when you rent here, a lot of landlords require you to buy this insurance policy. Well, you can't get this insurance policy usually unless you have residency. So if you don't have residency, you may have fewer options when it comes to looking for long-term rentals. There's a bunch of things like that that is just going to make your life a bit easier, and it's going to be easier to get acclimated in Mexico and live like a real person here rather than uh, someone who can't legally do various things. So I'm going to be giving you some monthly income and savings numbers here to qualify for residency. But keep in mind, there's like a general guideline given by the Mexican government on what the requirements should be. However, consulates have the flexibility to make their own requirements. So one consulate could be lower than these numbers that I'm going to give you. Another could even be higher than these numbers that I'm going to give you. So to qualify in 2024 for temporary residency via financial solvency, 
you would have to have an income of four thousand one hundred and fifty U.S. dollars a month, and you have to have had that a minimum of that for the past six months. Or if we're talking Canadian dollars, we're looking at five thousand seven hundred Canadian. And again, that's you have to go there showing bank accounts, bank statements for the last six months. Or you can prove financial solvency through savings and investments and retirement accounts. Keep in mind that having Bitcoin or gold or something like that doesn't count. It actually has to be in a banking institution. So you have to be able to show bank statements showing your balance. And the savings requirements is 69,000 US dollars. Or if we're talking Canadian, 96,000 Canadian dollars. And if you're proving financial solvency via savings and investments and retirement accounts, you have to go in there showing 12 months of bank statements with a minimum balance of that every single month for the last 12 months. Now, if you don't qualify for this, don't worry. There's lots of other ways to qualify for residency. This is just the most common way. And I'm going to tell you about those in a little bit. So just keep watching. And by the way, something important to know is after you get residency, you can never enter Mexico as a tourist when your residency is valid. And if you do, you automatically lose your residency and you have to start the process all over again. And this includes going up to one of the automated machines when you enter Mexico. If you go up to one of the most machines mistakenly and you you fill out that information as if you're a tourist, your residency is canceled and you have to start this whole process over again and meet the qualifications all over again. And by the way, if you're going to be sponsoring a spouse or a child to get their residency, you have to add about 25% to these numbers. But let's say that you can qualify as it is right here, but you couldn't qualify if these were 25% higher. Well, if you're trying to sponsor your spouse, something you can do is you can qualify for residency right now. And then later after you have your residency and you and your spouse are in Mexico, you can actually get your spouse residency without any additional financial requirements. So that's one way to go about it. And I'm going to tell you about all these other ways to get residency after I talk about permanent residency here. Oh, one more thing before I move on to permanent residency with temporary residency, you can bring in a foreign plated car to Mexico. However, with permanent residency, you cannot have a foreign plated car. So I've actually seen it before where a husband and a wife will come to Mexico. One will get temporary residency, even though they could both qualify for permanent, one will get temporary and one will get permanent so that they can bring a foreign plated car in. Now, what I did is I just bought a car here. So I have a Mexican plated car. So if you can't bring in a foreign plated car, why would you want permanent residency? Well, as the name suggests, it's permanent. It's valid for the rest of your life. You can legally enter and leave Mexico whenever you want for the rest of your life, and you never have to requalify again. So that is a big plus. And also having permanent residency, you're basically going to have all the same rights as a Mexican citizen and be able to do all the things that a Mexican citizen would be able to do and get all the discounts for citizens and things like that except you cannot vote. However, you can eventually convert this into citizenship. So something permanent residency will allow you to do that temporary won't, for example, is if you want to get the Costco Mexico credit card, you have to have permanent residency. You can't get it with temporary residency. Uh, for example, if you want to open up a bank account at HSBC, you're going to need permanent residency. They won't do it for temporary residency, according to someone I talked to recently. So you're going to run into some things like that, that you cannot do with temporary residency, but you can with permanent. So what are the requirements to qualify for permanent residency via income? Just like with temporary, you have to show this for the last six months. And that is going to be $6,900 a month talking USD and in Canadian dollars, we're looking at 9,600. And then for savings, investments, retirement accounts, you're going to need in US dollars, 
277,000 or in Canadian, $383,000. And that has to be your minimum balance for the past 12 months. And when looking at these numbers, keep in mind that even if you qualify, you may still not get approved because it's up to the person at the consulate whether you get approved or not. The first time I went to try to qualify for residency, uh, based on the financial requirements at the time, I qualified for temporary residency. And she refused to give me any kind of residency because her reasoning was, I don't see why you just can't keep entering Mexico as a tourist and keep getting 180 day visas. So she denied me even though I qualified. And then the next time I went to try to get residency, I went to a different consulate. And this time I was applying for permanent residency because I qualified for the permanent residency requirements at that time. But then that time I was denied permanent residency because of my age. They said I wasn't old enough and only gave me temporary residency. And this is why people will select certain consulates the consulates that are more lenient, the consulates that don't care about your age, or the consulates that are uh, more laid back when it comes to uh, qualifying for temporary or permanent residency. And this is this is one reason why a lot of people will hire an immigration facilitator. Search in a Facebook group, like let's say you're going to Mexico City, you would go in a Facebook group for Mexico City expats and search in that group. Uh, immigration facilitator, and you'll get some results of other people's recommendations. So now let's talk about other ways to get residency in Mexico. Like if you can't qualify for one of these, like these numbers are getting really big. So it's totally understandable if you can't qualify that way, but there are many other ways to get residency and you only need to qualify for one of these. So the first way is one that might work if you're younger, like you're younger, you're in a relationship, you want to have a child. If you have a child, in Mexico, your child is automatically a citizen and both parents are automatically permanent residents. No financial requirements whatsoever. This next thing is the most common way that people get residency by far for those who cannot meet these financial requirements. And that is the regularization program. And from what I've read, it is renewed in 2024 yet again for like the third or fourth year in a row. This started, I think it was back in 2020, where if you had entered Mexico on a tourist visa in the prior year, it's 2024 right now, if you had entered Mexico in 2023 on a tourist visa and you're still in Mexico, after your tourist visa expires, you can apply for the regularization program and you can get a four-year temporary residency with no financial requirements. Now, I told you guys this in 2023 that this would probably be renewed in 2024. And it looks like it has been. Now, will it be renewed in 2025? I don't know. They just said that the program is going to continue until further notice. If you're not yet in Mexico, you cannot qualify for the regularization program this year in 2024. However, like let's say you come to Mexico in August of 2024 on a 180 day tourist visa. Well, if you stay in Mexico and you stay until 2025, we're gonna find out around the beginning of 2025 if that regularization program has been extended into 2025. And if it has, you'll be able to get a four year temporary residency with no financial requirements at all. And keep in mind that four year residency can be converted to permanent residency at the end of it. And then after you have permanent residency, you then could try to go for citizenship if you want to. Oh, by the way, I've been asked before if you have to give up your US citizenship to get residency in Mexico. No, no, not at all. You, you can even get dual citizenship. You can get citizenship in Mexico and still keep your US citizenship. Both countries allow dual citizenship, so yeah, you can keep it. Another way to get residency without financial requirements is to marry a Mexican. So let's say you're a single guy, for example, and you're living in the US and you feel like most women there don't share your values and that there would be a higher percentage of the women population that share your values in Mexico. That's the way it is for me. You come to Mexico on a tourist visa, you date for a while, you meet some people, Eventually, you're probably going to find someone who's right for you. And then if you marry that person, you can get residency. 
you would automatically qualify for temporary residency, which could then be converted into permanent residency after a couple of years, and then you get a fast track to citizenship. Another way to live legally in Mexico is to seek asylum. And you don't have to be coming from a war-torn country, although that will get you asylum. Like, for example, when the Russia-Ukraine war started, Mexico announced that they'll give asylum to any Russian and any Ukrainian. But it doesn't have to be just from war. Like, for example, there was a family from the U.S. here. Uh, they're actually YouTubers. It's Gavin Syme. And I the story's a little bit blurry, but he ended up getting residency for his whole family based on getting legal asylum in Mexico. And although the details of it are a little blurry because it was quite a few years ago that I saw his video on this, but he was like a political protester in the U.S., if I remember right, and he was being targeted because of that. And I think they were even trying to take his kids away from him. And based on those facts, he was able to get residency for his whole family and legal asylum in Mexico. I heard of another example of a Canadian getting asylum because of the COVID restrictions in Canada. So there's a lot of things that could qualify for this. And it's a very formal legal process that you have to go through. Like I remember that video from Gavin Syme. I think he ended up going to the immigration office five different times over the course of the year, had a couple interviews with people. He had to present documents and proof, things like that. But eventually his whole family was granted legal residency. Another way to get residency is if you have a spouse who has residency. And it could be a spouse you were married to before, or it could be a spouse that you meet in Mexico and marry in Mexico, even if it's a foreigner. So let's say you come to Mexico single, you meet another foreigner who has residency, you get married, you can get residency without financial qualifications. Another way is to get a student visa. And with a student visa, there is a financial requirement. You have to make at least about $1,000 a month for the last three months or have savings of at least $10,000 for the last three months. And I don't know for sure, but I don't believe that there is an age limit on this. So let's say you come to Mexico and you want to study at a Mexican university, even if you're 40 years old, I believe you can still get the student visa. But if that's a route you want to take, you'll have to consult an expert on that because I'm not super familiar with that topic. And another way to get residency in Mexico without any financial requirements is coming here for a religious purpose. Now, I think this is one where you could get creative with, but you're going to have to talk to an expert who knows a heck of a lot more about it than I do. If you found this video useful, please subscribe to the channel and next watch this video. In it, I cover my cost of living in Mexico in 2024.